Welcome to React Space. And this, of course, is Kevin Devine, who will be playing at Orpheum later tonight. He graciously uh, agreed to stop by and play a couple songs. We're going to do a little bit of an interview first and uh, open up the floor to some Q&A, and then he's going to play for us. <laughs> yeah, you don't know what you... The Q&A yes. Q is exciting. It's like you're on the college lecture circuit right. at this point. Right. Well, and I have just as interesting things to say as the college lecture circuit. Now, you... Um, when, uh, when Miracle of 86 was first coming up, uh, it was coming during a time when it seemed like a lot of quote-unquote indie music was becoming sort of homogenized and a lot of the bands that were gaining popularity kind of all sounded the same. And you guys really broke from that. You, know, you took influence from different places. Was that a conscious thing or did you guys just have a better record collection? <laughs> well, that's cool that you think that because I'm sure that there's a lot of people that didn't think that. Like in New York, I mean, the response to our band was always very, <clears throat> the hipster people never really liked Miracle of 86 and thought it was kind of, we got dismissed in some circles for being part of exactly what you're probably saying we thought we broke from, you know. Right. I, I think that our band, the four guys in that band liked very different things from one another, which is always a, a good thing for the music. I mean, it's a mm -hmm. pain in the ass to write sometimes right. when that's the situation, but, um, you know, I think that was a big part of it. the last record in particular that we made. I thought was I, I I still really like that record, and I think it's because you know there was four really different record collections being argued over in the van on those trips. And um, but yeah, I mean, I, I, we we came from like a hardcore and punk rock scene, and I mean, I played in hundreds of of. of Hundreds of shows in that scene, and, and still do when I on occasion play like house shows and VFW halls and that kind of stuff. But like, that's where we really learned how to do anything. And even though our band was a lot more, I listened to Pavement and Sonic Youth and you know REM and later The Replacements and Modest Mouse. It wasn't exactly the hardcore stuff that the rest of the kids in that scene were listening to. I played around all that stuff a lot, and we picked. So you pick things up from it, <clears throat> and then, you know you're listening to like Elliot Smith, but playing at shows with like Choke Cold and stuff like that, and it definitely is going to make something weird happen out of how your band sounds. So it, it always been part of this. it always seems like a, those bands that that people think from the outside that you're so different from. The bands are usually pretty accepting. I mean, did you find that when you were playing shows with bands like Chokehold that they those, dug the band and wanted to hang out? Those hardcore bands were great to to, uh, to me. I mean, I, all the pe all the like sort of more politicized, radical, you know, those were shows in the mid '90s and late '90s where it was like a table in the back with bands merchandise, but just as often with like you know literature on. Um, mm -hmm. Peter Singer and Animal Liberation and G3 Welcome and Kennedy kind of stuff. Right, right. And, and this was like a, a little bit, like some of the crime thing stuff was coming out around mm -hmm. then, and a lot of like really heavily radicalized, politicized, like meeting 17 year old girls who were like super fully formed, badass, like, you know, liberated, vegan, just people that you were like, you, you weren't meeting in Staten Island usually, you know. Um, so, I mean, those people always were very accepting, and you could, you could get up with an acoustic guitar and play, <clears throat> like, your shitty version of a folk song at, at 16 or 17 years old, and they would sit and be okay with that. Right. So, I never, the, the, I always found the hip rock people are the people that have been a little, they're a little more impressed me, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? But yeah. even those, I, I mean... You know, the hard, hardcore kids always seem to be able to have some spirit and have some fun. And the kids in the bands were no exception to that. When you started doing your own stuff, was it was there stuff in Miracle of '86 that you weren't getting? Were you going away from something, or you think you're moving more towards? Something? Well, I feel like I wrote a lot of stuff from Miracle of '86 that the guys in Miracle of '86, understandably to some extent, one dude was really like kind of dogmatic about acoustic guitars. He thought it was like lame to ever play acoustic guitar. Right. And I was like, well that kind of, that's limiting. You know, like that's a whole instrument. Pianos weren't allowed either. But like... Do you play piano? Uh, not in any way that I can like make up melodies and... Right. 
tinker, but no, no, definitely not never a piano a player. No, 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 no. But but I can hear things, but I can't. You know, it's all by by ear. But um. But so I think there were certain things that they just. I was writing. I was listening to a lot more like Bob Dylan and and getting into like things like Leonard Cohen, and I was very into Elliot Smith and a lot of. Bell and Sebastian, like quieter indie rock stuff that was happening at the time. As much as I was into the louder, screamy stuff sure, too. Sure. So, but I, as I was writing, it seemed like I was writing 20 songs a year and 16 of them would be quieter and four of them would be screamy. So if you're the primary songwriter in a band and you're only writing four songs that really fit with what that band was doing, it's not, something was not right. Mm -hmm. And the I for a long time I didn't put out I, I mean I didn't put it out consciously to leave that band I, I thought I could do both right <clears throat> but it sort of didn't turn out that way for a lot of reasons you know bands bands break up way more often just because everyone in the band has a harder time getting along with each other than I, I think that's the, that's than the, the other thing reason, sure. because it's a weird relationship it's like different than your relationship with your wife or your girlfriend or with your family or with your other friends. You like live with these people and make this thing with them and you like fucking hate them sometimes and you love them too. It's very, it's a strange dynamic in a band. Yeah, I mean people always make the, uh, the marriage metaphor for, and I think that I've found over the years that being in a band is even harder than being in a one-on-one -on -one relationship well, with I, don't, I don't know, but I'm not married and I never have been, but I do know that if, if, if a band is any indicator, I don't know that I'm rushing to that either. <laughs> so.